So I guess Andrew Tate is a Christian spiritual guru now? Well, at least that's what he's portraying himself to be after responding to the incident where Bishop Mar Mari Emanuel was attacked. What's going on guys? It's Big Nick back for another video. Thank you guys so much for coming back to the channel today. Before we get into today's video, if you guys like Christian content, please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel down below if you are new, and turn on my post notifications so you never miss a new video. Without further ado, Let's get into it. As you know, the incident of Bishop Marmari Emanuel being attacked while he was live streaming at church has gained a lot of attention worldwide, and now Andrew Tate posted a video addressing Christians about the situation. However, this advice that Andrew Tate is giving to Christians is completely unbiblical, and any Christian that falls for this type of teaching is clearly not walking in the spirit. Now, I want to start off by saying I'm not an Andrew Tate hater, but if you're going to promote ideas that are against the Bible and against the Word of God, and specifically gear these ideas is towards Christians, my loyalty is to Jesus Christ in the Bible, no matter how much I may agree with some of your opinions. So because of that, we're going to break down this video of this supposed advice that he's giving to the body of Christ, and soon you'll see the false interpretation of what he thinks the gospel is about. He posted a video on his account on the platform X called A Message to All Christians. So let's see, what is his message to you and I? Finally, the Christians are angry. I don't know why it's taking you so long. Even as a Muslim, even as somebody who's recently reverted, it gives me genuine happiness to see the Christians finally angry about something. You have gay preachers, LGBT drag story hours at your churches. You sit around and turn the other cheek. You have no cheeks left to turn. Here we go again. As some of you know, Andrew Tate decided to convert to Islam to worship the false pagan moon god known as Allah off the sole contingency that Islam is correct because Christians allow gay preachers in their churches. Therefore deeming all of Christianity progressive, weak, and incorrect. He continues to peddle this talking point to this day as if there aren't gay Islamic imams preaching in the mosques and as if there's no no such thing as progressive LGBT Muslims. Every Abrahamic religion has groups within it that are progressive and gay, but he only focuses on the cases in the Christian community and ignores the fact that this exists in other religions too, including his own. So using this logic to completely invalidate the Christian faith because a few people go off script from what the Bible actually teaches is one of the dumbest talking points ever, but he continues to talk about it. There's nothing in this world without masculine rage. It's the bottom line of everything. There's no country without men who are prepared to get angry and defend it. There's no idea. There's no house. There's no religion without masculine rage. They've bred it out of you. And for the first time in a long time, we see Christians finally angry about something. The reason your religion is failing is because this whole bull of tolerance and sitting around turning the other cheek is making you globally mocked. You're seen as weak. With all due respect, I'm not about to take advice from somebody who constantly indulges in the flesh on why Christianity is failing. Your argument that Christianity is declining because it's being globally mocked is exactly what the Bible teaches us is going to happen in the last days. It teaches the fact that there's going to be a great apostasy and there are going to be many scoffers in the end times. Don't believe me? Check this out. 2 Thessalonians 2.3 says, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there be a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So this decline of the Christian faith has been predicted as Bible prophecy when we were approaching the end times. And obviously were there. Now it goes even further to say in 2 Peter 3.3, 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. Andrew Tate is unknowingly clearly validating Bible prophecy coming to pass and thinking that this somehow proves Islam to be true. Somebody get a real Christian around this man because I could have literally showed him that in two seconds and he probably would stop using this talking point. But anyways, Let's continue the video. And when I see Christians mad for the first time in a long time, although I'm no longer Christian, it makes me feel happy. Brother, you were never a Christian. He always says this, but you weren't a Christian to begin with. You just adopted the cultural atmosphere of Romania, which is heavily influenced off of Orthodox Christianity. This is equivalent to an atheist arguing with a Christian, saying they used to be a Christian when their only Christianity was going to church twice a year, once on Easter and once on Christmas. And if you used to be Christian, you were arguably lukewarm at best, considering this era that you were supposedly following Jesus is when you also ran a cam girl business, even though Jesus clearly preaches against lusting after another woman. So if you were even Christian at all, you didn't really understand the gospel to begin with. I don't want to be a Pharisee and be judgmental. I'm just saying you were never a Christian. So you got to stop saying that. This is exactly what the world needs. There has to be a line where you say, no, we will not accept. 
That's how we ended up in this position in the first place. Accepting everything. It's not tolerant. It doesn't make you a good person to let someone else f your wife. Do you understand? It makes you a cock. Yo, what the heck, bro? Who say that any Christian is cool with their wife being smashed by another dude? Like, what? Why is this even a talking point in the video? My man does not understand Christianity at all. There is nowhere in the Bible where God says it's okay for another man to sleep with your wife. In fact, he literally forbids it in the Ten Commandments that you shall not commit adultery. So I don't know what type of church he's been to or what type of Christians he's been around, but no Christian man is going to allow their wife to be smashed by another dude. Why even say that? <laughs> what are you saying, dude? All right, anyways, let's continue with the video. And it gets to a point where you finally have had enough. This piece of shit, which tried to stab the preacher, I don't care if I was defending a nation state and I was a sniper and I had the opponent nation state's holy man in my sights. I would not pull the trigger in the middle of a sermon. There's no excuse for that. This person deserves the harshest possible justice. And guess where he's not going to get it? He's not going to get it in some bullshit Australian prison. He's going to get a lawyer. The lawyer's going to talk about his human rights and his mental health. He'll be back on the street soon. While he's in jail, he'll be living better than most people around the world even live in Muslim and Christian nations. This is how I know for a fact that Andrew Tate is not actually a Muslim because he still has some humanity in him. Notice how no Muslims except for Andrew Tate condemned the attacker for trying to kill Bishop Mar Mari Emanuel. In fact, many Muslims were publicly praising this attacker. There are many verses in the Quran and the Hadiths where Muhammad Muhammad was recorded to kill Christians because he deemed them as idol worshippers and pagans. And Christians were known as infidels. And Muhammad was very experienced in exterminating infidels. Even in Sahih Muslim 130, it says, The Messenger of Allah said, I have been commanded to fight against people so long as they do not declare that there is no God but Allah. I could reference many other warlike commandments that Islam holds dear to their core when regarding the subject about martyring unbelievers. But if I did that, that would probably make this video a whole hour. So I'd have to do a whole separate video on that. But if you want it, let me know. You know I'm not shy from controversy. This piece of shit deserves an eye for a f***ing eye. Isn't that what the Bible says? And for the first time ever, Christians are standing up. If Christians stood up, the Western world wouldn't be failing in real time. I say this as a Muslim. All of the problems of the Western world is down to an absolute lack of faith and conviction within the Christians. That's how they get away with all of this garbage. So Andrew Tate mentions that we should adopt the Old Testament teaching of an eye for an eye. What he fails to understand is that this verse in Leviticus 24, 19 to 20 was a specific commandment from God that has to be looked in the proper context. Moses recorded how as judge over the people, God gave him sentences to issue once a person was was convicted of a crime. And this was based on a testimony of at least two witnesses. If a person was found guilty of doing something that was intentionally caused to put someone's eye out, the sentence was for his or her eye to also be put out. This was a specific commandment to uphold the law in the area and for governing authorities to carry out. Not for some random person to just plunge someone's eye out for no reason. Jesus even addresses this in Matthew 5 38 to 39 where he says, you have heard that it was said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil, but if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Now many people misinterpret this and think that Jesus is just telling people to be sissies, but that's just not true at all. The reason he brought this up is to show the contrast of the Old Testament law with the New Testament covenant of grace. He was not saying, I need you to be a weak coward. He was emphasizing the mercy that's established in the New Covenant and how we ought to be merciful to one another, considering that God is being merciful to us through the sacrifice of his son. On Jesus Christ by forgiving us of our sins with his death and resurrection on the cross. This is not about Muslims versus Christians. That's not what this is about. This is what they want. We need more God, not less God. We need more men who are prepared to stand on God and fight for God. It is the atheists. It's the people who believe in nothing. They're the ones who are pushing and purporting the ideas that are destroying your society. They are the people who are trying to destroy your family life and poison your children. I have no problem with Christians. I embrace Christians as my brothers and finally happy to see you standing up for yourselves. I truly pray this piece of gets what he deserves.
Here's the main issue with red pill guys like Andrew Tate. They believe that masculinity means taking physical revenge on someone that does you wrong. And in the secular world, that is what it means. But in the kingdom of God, it's completely different. In fact, that is the opposite of what a godly masculine man must do. Now, don't get me wrong. A man should defend his household and people that are weaker than him. I'm not saying that if a robber breaks into your house and threatens your children and your wife, you shouldn't do anything. No, I'm going to load the chamber and I'm going to take care of business. But defense is different than offense. Andrew Tate is saying that Christians should take offensive measures that are rooted in revenge as a way to maintain their honor. And this is just completely unbiblical. Also, King David, one of the most powerful kings in the entire Bible, was getting chased by a demon-possessed king King Saul. And the reason he was getting chased by Saul is because Saul was jealous of him and he knew that he was going to succeed his throne. So for years on end, Saul chased King David in hopes to find him and kill him. And even when King David had a point where he caught Saul lacking and he could have definitely taken him out, he refused to do so because he honored King Saul. Although King Saul fell away from God, he knew that God had still anointed him and he refused to have blood on his hands. Now Muslim Andrew Tate might have a problem with this because King David is also recognized in Islam as a prophet, a messenger of God, and a king. King David would not strike Saul, although he had the ability to, because he trusted in God to avenge him instead. And King David was one of the most successful documented kings in the entire Bible. He was undoubtedly a masculine man who won many battles when God told him to. I mean, he killed the giant Goliath. My man was no beta male by any means. But we see that he never took physical revenge on evildoers that personally did him wrong. And this is exactly what Mar Mari Emanuel has decided to imitate. As he just released an official statement from the hospital, which displays the exact mercy and grace that I just shared Jesus and King David emulated. Let's watch the official update on how he handles the situation, and you'll see how a biblical, godly, masculine man is supposed to react, not how Andrew Tate is telling you to react. This is Bishop Mari Emanuel um, addressing our beloved faithfuls, whoever you are and wherever you are. We need to understand that we need to be always thankful to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For whatever trials and tribulations we go through, uh, we are carrying the cross. Let us not, not forget that at all. The Lord Jesus said to us, if you do not carry your cross every day and follow me, you are not worthy to be my disciple. We thank the Lord Jesus for what took place in the last couple of days. Um, uh, I'm doing fine, uh, recovering very quickly. We thank the Lord Jesus. So there is no, no need to be worried or concerned. Uh, and a piece of advice to our, all, uh, our beloved faithfuls, I need you to act Christ-like. The Lord Jesus never taught us to fight. The Lord Jesus never taught us to retaliate. The Lord Jesus never said to us an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. The Lord Jesus said never return evil with evil, but return evil with good. For this is our master, our teacher, our leader, and our good shepherd who leads us to green pastures and still waters. So my, my beloveds, I want you to always be calm. We need to be always law abiding citizen as well. We need to cooperate with the police directives, whether it be at a state level or a federal level. We, uh, we uh, pray for our country our beloved country, Australia, and our beautiful city of Sydney. And we pray that the Lord Jesus always protects this country and the people of this country. And we should never forget that we are very blessed to be Aussies. But above all, we are Christians and we need to act like it. Love never fails. First Corinthians 13, 8. Love never fails. Whatever has happened to me personally, I thank the Lord Jesus. It's, it's a huge blessing for me. I, uh, I forgive whoever has done this uh, act and I say to him, you're my son, I love you and I will always pray for you and whoever sent you to do this, I forgive them as well, in Jesus' mighty name. Um, I have nothing in my heart but love for everyone, whether that person is a Christian or not, that's uh, totally beside the point. The Lord Jesus always taught us to love one another. Love God and love your neighbor like yourself. Whoever that neighbor is, we need to love them and respect them as we love and respect ourselves. So I have forgiven them. I'm praying for them. And for this young man, I say to you, you're my son and you'll always be in my prayers. May the Lord Jesus forgive you. May the Lord Jesus bless you and show you the way, my dear.
my dear son. What a man of God this bishop is. This is what true dignity and honor looks like. Don't be deceived by people like Andrew Tate who promote messages that are satisfying to the flesh but disturbing to the spirit. Although Andrew Tate may have some good messages on masculinity and philosophy, he is still a man that's a slave to his flesh. And this should be taken into consideration when people think he has sound advice on Christianity. Because Christianity is not a doctrine that submits to the flesh, but it's a doctrine that was wrote by the Holy Spirit. Like this bishop said, Jesus never told us to go take revenge in the streets by retaliating and attacking people under the guise of Christianity. He told us to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. And this is not passive behavior, but what true dignity and honor looks like. I want to thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you made it this far to the end of the video and you're denying the flesh but feeding the spirit, I want you to comment down below. I serve the Holy Spirit. I'll see you guys very soon for another video. I love you guys so much. May God bless all of you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Take care and peace out. Ain't a game, Jesus who I claim Yeah he reigns, cross up on my chain Brand new lane, heaven my domain The world I gained, but it ain't do a thing